Good morning and welcome to Business Africa Live on BTA. Today, as we all know, the Black Stars of Ghana are playing in the World Cup. And so I'm sure most of our attention will be there. But um, even though that is what is happening, it's also important that we keep to business and ensure that business keeps running. We can only wish the Black Stars all the best as they seek to bring glory to the nation and as they seek to take on the USA today, wish them well. They can once again beat them and progress to the next stage. For our lineup for today, we'll take a look at the markets as usual to see what happened last week on the stock markets, uh, on the currency markets and the commodities market as well. Then I'll have a discussion with you, you know, to, to see his predictions for the week, especially uh, on the city front because of the changes that the Bank of Ghana has introduced in the recent measure that um, they, they brought into the market to see what potentially the impact of those reversals of policies would have on the stability or otherwise of the city against the dollar and the other trading currencies. So we'll take a look at that and also take a look at the, the stock market to see what the predictions might be for this week. Uh, with the week closing at, you know, you are having 10 uh, equities um, with price changes, 10 equities with price changes. Well, let's see what Monday, today will be. Um, probably because of the Black Stars match, activity might not be as, as high as we are looking for, but let's see. And so I'll, I'll be talking to you, I'll see what happens today. Then we'll have a, re a discussion on BOG's uh, reaction to the Fitch report. Um, you know, what the impact of that is, what is into detail in terms of that Fitch report. We'll also look at where to invest. As we keep saying, it's always important that we bring you a place where you can place your money, where you can invest. Taking some risk, of course, but knowing that the returns will be positive and good for you. So we'll bring you a place once again uh, as to where to invest to make good returns. We'll be talking again um, also on the new or the, uh, the foreign exchange measures that the Bank of Ghana reviewed just on Friday to see what the implications will be for the economy and the currency in particular, the city uh, depreciation uh, in particular. We'll take our quote for today and that will be our, up, or our line up for, uh, for this morning. For now, I'll hand you over to Yao as he takes us to the market as what happened over last week. Good morning, Yao. Good morning. And welcome to the set. I'm good. I hope you are also highly anticipating the Black Stars yeah, match. Yeah, I mean, you know, as, as a Ghanaian, you know, I have no option but to uh, I, I, you know, look for victory against the U.S. You know, with the surprises going on in, 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 the, in the World Cup, you realize that nobody could have you know, realized that uh, uh, Spain would have been held up by five. <laughs> that is true. And nobody <laughs> anticipated that uh, Uruguay would have been <laughs> lose by three. Yeah. So yeah. There's yeah. so yeah. many surprises going on. But then, as you said, business as usual. So Most definitely. Business, uh, Most definitely. On to the stock exchange where a total volume of 1.61 million shares traded at a consideration of 4.81 million Ghana cities. Um, the shares trading with a, a Goyo trading the highest volume on the market of 1.4 million shares and the consideration also just about 1.4 million uh, on the, the Ghana Stock Exchange after Friday's session. Was down uh, marginally to close at 9.95 um, point, uh, 9.95 percent yet to date. While the financial stocks index was trading uh, closed in around 17 percent, uh, with the likes of uh, Ghana Commercial Bank, EcoBank, ETI, and Cow, and the rest in the mix of gainers at the close of day on uh, Friday. Um, a total. In terms of um, gains on the market, Goyo recorded four pesos to uh, position to close at one Ghana CD per share. Uh, we also saw the likes of EGO uh, showing some good prospects of, uh, of uh, recovering from the slump, uh, reporting eight pesos again to close at one CD, 78 pesos. And then the likes of ETI, Stanchat, and Ecobank Ghana closing the day as gainers on the Ghana Stock Exchange.
Losers for the day included Guinness Ghana down by 23 pesos to close at 5 cities 25 pesos a share, while Farm Milk went down by 22 pesos. Unilever also fell by 28 pesos to close at 17 cities 62 pesos a share, while Cow and Tallow were down by 1 peso and 21 pesos respectively. Uh, in terms of gain uh, trading, as I said before, Royal recorded the highest volume and the highest value traded on Friday. Now we take a look at other stock exchanges across the African continent. We'll take a look at the South African exchange, that's the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, where the aggregate stock index on the Johannesburg stock market was up by 77.63 points at a year to date of 11.19%. In terms of gainers on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, we saw the likes of uh, Palingest Resources up by 4.59%, while the likes of Pergin, um, ADV Tech, uh, Sasso, and African Bank, African Bank Investment uh, reporting gains, of course, with a range of appreciation between 4.04 and 2.56% at the end of trading on Friday. We take a look now at the Nigerian stock market and uh, take a look at how uh, the index the index on the Nigerian stock market was up by 288.45 uh, points, representing a marginal percentage change of 0.70% and a year to date of 3.83%. Volume traded on the Nigerian stock market uh, totaled to about 215.42 million shares at a uh, consideration of 15.73 million US dollars. In terms of market capitalization on Nigerian stock market it closed at 83.62 um, billion US dollars at the end of trading on uh, Friday um, in terms of gainers on the Nigerian stock market we saw the like of Seplat up by 1.54 and corn oil uh, which has been on the on the on the you know um, on the uh, moving up for the past 0.23%. We saw National Bank also going up by 2.66%, while Dansem and Stambik also reporting gains on the Nigerian stock market. Now let's take a look at the Moroccan stock market, where the Masi, which is the index on the Moroccan market, uh, closed down by 16.21 points to uh, close at 5.17% year to date on the Moroccan stock market. Uh, gainers on the BVC included Rizma, Africa Industry, Media Comark, Consumer, and uh, Tima, also reporting gains of, uh, within the range of 8.95 and. Uh, 3.23% at the end of trading on Friday. Now we stay uh, in Northern Africa and take a look at the Tunisian market where the Tunidex also fell by 25.53 points to close at just about 4.26% yet to date. In terms of gainers on the uh, Tunisian market, we saw the likes of Sutuva uh, by 3.84%, STIP, ICF, and Satunizi also reporting gains of just about 0.07%. Now let's take a look at some commodities and see how uh, you know, our, our major exporters I mean, uh, ha are faring on the market. Um, oil was up by 0.84% uh, on Friday to close at 113.84 US uh, dollars uh, per barrel. Gold was up by 0.19% um, to close at 1,274 US dollars uh, per, uh, per ounce. Uh, cocoa was at 3,095 US dollars per metric ton, while coffee and sugar close at 177 and 17.79 US dollars a pound, respectively. Now let's take a look at some commodity, um, some currency market information where the Ghana CD uh, reported some uh, marginal decline to the US dollar at uh, just about 0.14% to close at two CDs 99 pesos on the um, interbank market to yet to date of 38.32%, uh, which is quite high, although the, the uh, rate of depreciation has slowed down quite uh, recently. Uh, we look at the, the pound sterling closing at five CDs and zero. Uh, Three pesos um, at a yet to date of 40.96 percent, while euro and the CFA were also up by 0.30 percent, respectively, to close at 35, 36.67 percent, and 26.30 percent yet to date uh, appreciations to the Ghana city. So, viewers, we now have the various information that you need to know on the stock exchanges, uh, on the commodity market, and also on the currency. 
who have issued this cash in. Uh, I know that today's program will be dominated by the, the policy uh, changes and, uh, and the withdrawal of certain policies by the Bank of Ghana uh, you know, to, to, to help bring some confidence onto the, the market and then to help the city to gain some stability. So we'll have a short discussion on that, so stay tuned, and I'll take you back to Africa. Thank you very much, Yao. And um, as you said, today's uh, you know, program will be dominated by, by the, you know, the reversal of some of the policies by the Bank of Ghana. But then if we take a look at the stock market, we saw 10 price changes. And all of that, you know, we had, apart from Carl Bank, which is a financial stock that dropped, the rest were all manufacturing companies. Farm Milk, Guinness, yes. Unilever, they all dropped points uh, last week, Friday. Uh, what does it tell us? Well, the, the, the picture um, is very clear that um, look at the current situation, the current economic situation we are in now. Mm. It's uh, the manufacturing sector that's going to suffer because of the energy issues and tax issues and so many things that they have to battle with okay. in the industry. So it's, uh, it's, it's not anything surprising to see the uh, you know, the likes of Unilever and then the likes also going down because um, you know, they, they are the worst hit in terms of uh, um, effects of the, the, um, the declining the uh, mm. confidence mm. in the local economy. I see. But then you, you, you see that if you look at, um, for example, um, the current move toward the financial sector, then that means we, we, we have to still rely on them to see any more positive changes on the market. We're looking at the current trend. I think that is, that is where we have to go because uh, uh, these financial stocks are the ones actually who are leading the, the, the rally. So irrespective mm. <laughs> of where a stock they may be, it's still there. Mm. Um, mm. Because mm. Uh, you know, in, in the current situation that we are, these are the, these are the, the, so this is the sector that is booming. Even though okay. all, most of the sectors are also going down, mm. the banking mm. sector is booming because of the 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 the, the, the state of the you know, it, um, uh, the banking regime and then the interest rate regime that we have presently. Yeah. So they they will surely be the ones in the profitability. Because zone. if you look at, for example, um, those equities that went up, uh, if you're looking, for example, at the HFC, well, HFC was stable, but Stanchard was up by Pesua. Uh, you had um, uh, what do you say, e Eco uh, EGL Enterprise Group up by 8 pesos. You had uh, Eco Bank also up by 3 pesos. You had ETI also up by a peso. You tell, and then you realize that the momentum is, is, is quite high because the last transaction prices are no, on the upside. Yeah. So it gives you an impression that we possibly should see a lot more price changes, uh, especially for these equities on the upside? Yeah, I think so. I think um, looking at the, 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 the rate at which these, the, the demand for these equities I have become now, mm -hmm. it's not surprising to see their share price going. And today, for example, <laughs> I would not be surprised to see you know, these financial equities, especially with the likes of EGL and Carl and the rest going up again. As even though Carl dropped, you think that we'll oh, Carl, see... Carl, Carl still has the potential, actually. It's just that one city, I mean. It's still, it's still up, and I think it, it has the potential to, to, to go up. To go up And again. then the likes of Commercial Bank and EGL mm. also will come in the mix. And ETI also, of course, could uh, stem one or two surprises in the market. I see, I see. Do you, you, so the, the Mozambican uh, acquisition, for example, you think would have a, a very positive Im impact it should. on ETI? I mean, it should have a positive impact in their, in their, in their, in their, in their books, um, especially mm. ETI. Because now they've, they've been able to secure certain funds, and they're using these funds to expand their horizon and, and they'll make some acquisitions here and there. Mm. So I think mm. it's uh, a little of, uh, good news for them. Good news for them. Okay, now let's take a look at the uh, currency. <coughs> Unfortunately, we didn't see a halt in the slide of the city on Friday, even though we had heard the, the, the Bank of Ghana's intervention. We, had, we didn't see any impact on that. Do you think within the short term, maybe this week, for example, we might see some stability on the city front? Well, we could see some, um, you know, some stability in terms of the performance okay. of, the, of the Ghana city on the, on, the, on the bank market. But then I'm not expecting any significant change in the short term. Uh, probably in the medium term, we could see some changes. We could see some, uh, some, some, some confidence. Because you know, when, the, when these measures were implemented the first time, it caused some level of panic in the system. Mm. And that really mm. did not go well for the Ghana city. Now we've relaxed most of these uh, policies. 
and uh, so to, to make it making it comfortable for people to come into Ghana more and to do business but then of course we should also find a way of streamlining in terms of um, the, the whole notion of um, dollarization the system but then we should also compromise our, our, our trading exploits you know, mm. by uh, you know, bringing such measures to really make it very stringent for people to deal in foreign currencies in Ghana. But then, of course, it's, it's, still, it's the issue, actually, to me, it's not necessarily about the measures, it's about uh, you know, the demand and supply, because we are in a floating regime where, you know, first the demand and supply really determine your, 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 your exchange rates. Mm. So if mm. inflation is going up, if other um, budget deficits are also going up and all that, it's showing a very, very uh, poor sign of your, your own. And that's exactly what Fitch was also com you know, commenting, commenting about. about. You know, because uh, we can have all these uh, uh, measures being relaxed, or, but then if, uh, for example, your inflation, because at the point when you're looking at the real inflation, the calculation of that, for mm -hmm. example, between two countries for, 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 a, bilateral, for a, a bilateral relationship, I think the, the CPI of both countries play a very key role. And if you look at the CPI of uh, uh, US and CPI of Ghana and we are calculating a rate on it, I think it's really not going to be something you know, very, very key for us. So mm -hmm. I think uh, the measures are good. It's good that at least for now it's been relaxed. So people that we, we, sh we should see some, inc uh, some, some good signs, especially in the supply side. The supply but side. then, of course, demand will, still not go, will, will not ease up anytime soon. So mm -hmm. I'm not really expecting mm -hmm. any significant uh, uh, changes. But then probably we could see some slowdown in the rate of depreciation for this week. And then the medium term. We can you know, hope for you know, a, a little bit of a um, an appreciation of the Ghana city, the Ghana you know, city. To, to the dollar and also to its majors. Because if you look at some, one of the, um, for example, one of, one of the reversals they've made is that you can now withdraw money at the counter, dollar, if you need at the counter. And so you can take at least after a $1,000 a day uh, from either your, the f your foreign currency account or foreign exchange account over the counter. That is not permitted. So, you know, those who had feared of putting their money in the bank uh, might, might probably not be comfortable enough to want to put their money there. But then I ask, will it also, doesn't this also have the potential to scare people away who might think that this is probably a way we want them to bring I, I, their money I, I back and they turn around? Well, I, 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 don't, I don't really think so. I think, I think the, the BOJF lens is lessons and the, I mean, every for, for some of us who initially supported these measures, mm. uh, we all we sat down and looked at the kind of panic that I think it was Created the way the, the way the, as I said the last time, the, the the policies were not bad, but the way they were implemented that was the issue. Mm. It caused mm. a level of panic, mm. and people mm. decided to stay away from the banking sector, especially those with the dollars. That's they true. decided to create foreign account and keep it there instead of bringing it here. Mm. So that was the issue that was going on, especially with these, uh, um, you know, um, uh, m and most of them being these multinationals. That's what they were doing. And I that see. really didn't help in terms of the supply side because there isn't much of you know, uh, um, um, dollars or any other foreign currency to trade in. Mm. So when you come mm. and your money wants to buy a dollar, because everybody knows that the dollar, the dollar actually represents more than 52% of the uh, total um, demand for foreign currencies, followed by the euro and then the pound sterling. That's so true. it's uh, if 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 we put in these measures and making them more 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 stringent, it really kind of causes a kind of panic. And then of course, while whilst the, once there are you know uh, policies or of measures that are, be, that are more stringent, people always find ways and means to beat around it. And that was really done superbly. And you know at the end we have to go back and try and relax more of these things and then probably we can go go in a very um, systematic way to you know uh, stem the situation than to just uh, implement these measures one of the things that they also talking about for example is encour encouraging the use of the currencies of the major trading currencies like the Chinese yuan and all that in in settlement so they don't necessarily need to convert to the dollar. dollar yeah and so you know I, I think probably this should go along with if, if 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 you're looking at the depreciation of the Ghana city to the others, I think the others if you have as a, especially as the past study for example is about forty, forty percent. Yeah. Trading in the trading in the past study will not necessarily look attractive for anybody if you're especially an importer. And uh, I think most of our import our our, our trades are with is, is with the Europe. Mm. Now, so mm. the euro also down by almost 36%. It doesn't really almost speak well. Uh, so it doesn't really speak well if you do trade in New York. Uh, so at the, at the end, I think what is the, what was the universal 
uh, a safe haven is the dollar. That's why most of the most countries are always demanding dollars. But if you also you know make it more friendly, user friendly for people to go into the yuan into the euro, you know try and stem some stability over there because the rate at which the city depreciates to the euro and in the past that it looks just about the same to the to, 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 to the world to the dollar. To dollar but then you also have additional measures like encouraging the use of the cards the plastic cards mm -hmm. you know so that you, you can especially for those who import if china is where you want to go you can go they'll load up to fifty thousand dollars for you uh, or you can have access to at least fifty thousand dollars, and they can do your shopping. I think I think it's it's it's, 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 it's it's something that it's something that we should have been done that earlier. I think when the when these measures were introduced, I think we should, we should have done. You no, know, because if you 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 you're, you're trying to stem the demand in terms of the physical dollar in the system, mm. then you have to find a way of making people do their business if it's so You have to go to any bottle yeah. So if, yeah. for example. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we, are, we are limiting the, 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 the flow or the, 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 the supply of dollars in the country, for example, and we are not making it easy for people to do certain trades. Yes, we could use that um, credit card situation. Mm. Yes, I know that there are certain um, s um, security situations with them, but some of these banks do it. They have this Visa you know, uh, ATM, card. ATM card that can be used anywhere across the world. And you can even sit in Ghana and use that ATM card to do your, 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 your buying in China and mm -hmm. wherever you go. And then you, you move on. I think it's about time that if you want to do international trade, we should be looking at all these things. We should be looking at all these things. Then you also have the situation where they are looking at um, networking all the forex bureaus so they can monitor the inflows and both the flows, uh, the, the inflow and outflow of the foreign currencies. And I think this was, should have also been well, done I think even they, longer. This was even announced, I think, last year, late last year, getting to December. I remember I had an interview with Reuters on this. Mm. And then they even came to me with information. That's what they had. They made some interviews with the people from the Bank of Ghana. I see. And so when the measures were, were being introduced, I thought they would be part of it. But unfortunately, they were not part of it. Part. Because uh, initially, what I heard was that they wanted mm. to make it uh, more transparent, especially, yeah. especially with the determination of the rates. Mm, mm, Make it more mm, transparent mm, for air. and so at, a, at any point in time you could go online and know that this is where on the average the dollar is selling. Mm, so that mm, based on mm, that you can also use that to plan your daily you know uh, um, current um, movement or, or, or your see. working capital and all I that. See, I see. But this wasn't that. Even the banks find it very difficult to even report. On their, on their, on their, on their, on their, their trade, because if you have one bank doesn't want the other bank to know what which position mean? I am trading at. There's okay. no transparency. So there isn't there. much of transparency. Even among the bank, even in the bank, there isn't much of transparency because everybody That's reports true. to the Bank of Ghana. The Bank of Ghana comes up with an average rate. And not what uh, everyone is doing. Exactly. So at the end, what what really happens is that uh, there, there's a rate called the interbank market, which is around 2.99, which everybody knows that the rate is now about 3.02 or 3.05. Mm. But then mm. uh, uh, what we know is uh, we have a rate called the interbank. Interbank. And, you know, it's... It's just an average rate. It's just an average rate where everybody's, everybody's trading. It's really much of transparency. I thought this was something that the, the, the BOG wanted to address even late last year, getting to this year. Mm. But, you know, probably it's not... It's still not too late for for for, for them, for, for to, them to, to do, do that because if we have a very uh, you know uh, um, structured or streamlined uh, foreign um, for foreign exchange market, it really helps in terms of uh, you know investors who want to come because it's in, in, in almost most of the countries when you want the value of the U.S. dollar, you go to any of these business websites and you click on the button. You can easily That's check true. the value of the dollar to real, any real, real and, and there isn't habits. much of any variance between what you see. On this side, and also on the other side, they're just about the same. Mm. But here, it's you can even find it. And at the end, we we are in Ghana, and we have to check our exchange rate on Bloomberg. Sometimes That's it makes true. it uh, quite uh, quite right unbelievable. Because what, what yeah. Bloomberg yeah. does is they take a sample of about twenty or fifteen forex bureaus and take the the position of the banks, the banks. and then they strike an average, mm. and then that's where they report. That's interesting. What's your prediction for the week, especially when it comes to? Um, the, the capital market, the stock well, market. The stock market um, will, will I, I, as I said, is actually going to be the financial stocks once again. Mm. We're going to lead the market to, okay. you know, to, to, to some glory this week. Uh, the likes of Commercial Bank and the likes also, you know, EGA, or Commercial Bank, ETI, and uh, Cobank Ghana probably will have to lead the way. And we could see some gains from Cal also, from you know, Cal also doing, doing some uh, gains over there. The manufacturing sector, I don't really envisage any. 
um, gains over over there. But probably if there could be, could, could be maybe probably come from Unilever. Unilever, uh, yeah. if they're going to gain. Yeah, if there's going to be any gain in manufacturing, probably. Why Unilever? Come from because Unilever. I thought Unilever was quite highly priced. Yeah, you look at uh, Unilever has always yeah. been highly priced ever since. Uh, and I've never waited the time when Unilever has been priced even below this P or the market at which P. It's always up. It's always with the 24s and 30s and all that. I see. So it looks like investors really have uh, uh, much of a growth prospect for Unilever itself. So I mean, and I think Unilever is a big company. You know, mm. although mm. you know they, they are also going through some issues here in Ghana, but it's a really big company that could you know give investors. If you look at the consistency of the consistency of the returns, they return to investors over the past four to five years. You realize that. You know, investors still have confidence in Unilever. Unilever. So it's uh, it, we 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 could see some gains, up, unless yeah. probably uh, there's um, there's information about Unilever during the week that could also you know, um, you know impact impact, impact the on price. the prices quite significantly. Mm. Um, what about Bob? Bob, well, I don't really see. My, I don't um, we really anticipate any uh, um, increment in price for Bob. Okay. Uh, probably the worst they could do probably remain the same for the week. Uh, the queues have one or two trades in Bob, but uh, I think investors are really quite, um, s uh, they are not really kind of optimistic about the pr prospect of um, Bob. Mm -hmm. Bob. So I think it probably will might remain the same. I see. Well, yeah, thanks. Thank thanks you. very much, as usual. Uh, I hope you enjoy the match today. Uh, I really do. I really do. It's, <laughs> at, it's, it's at 10 o'clock. So I think most of us will still be in the house. So well, we can, we 10 o'clock in the morning? No, 10 p.m. Oh, yeah, wow. 10 p.m. I think the first match will be the um, um, Germany Portugal match. I'll be at 8. So after, so that, after that, then the black side. <coughs> well, okay. So enjoy the day. Talk to you tomorrow. Sure. Okay. So we're, we've been having a discussion on the market, especially the currency uh, market and then the stock exchange as well, as to what to anticipate for this week. We are taking a short break. We'll come back. We'll go into our first discussion for the day. Well, we'll take a look at Bank of Ghana's reaction to Fitch's reports on, on the economy and the currency as well. Stay tuned in. We'll be right back. successful people in Ghana today than before? Well, that is the truth. And the secret is in prudent financial planning with the right financial manager. You need to know the right fund manager who spends your money 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 4 weeks in a month, and 12 months in a year. That manager is at Gold Coast Fund Management. At Gold Coast, your money never sleeps. It revolves every second to give you more money for use when you really need it. For the past 21 years, Gold Coast Fund Management has held a strong reputation of spinning people's money to beat inflation, depreciation, and treasure bill rates. Put your money to work. Move from savings to investment. Pay your investment tight into the gold fund and gold money market fund and be assured that when you are in need, you can turn to them to resolve your financial problems. Gold Coast Fund Management, investment advice worth its weight in gold. Africa is becoming more populous and richer. It has experienced unprecedented and uninterrupted economic growth for the past three decades. But if African countries are to become economically successful, their governments will have to implement adequate policies which contribute to the expansion of the private sector, job creation, and an increase in the productivity levels. Corruption must be dealt with in Africa. Unemployment, mainly among the youth, is another challenge facing African leaders. These and many more issues that hinders our growth will be discussed on the banner and provide the why, how, 
and what to accelerate the continent's stream of economic freedom. Watch on the banner every Saturday is going to be hot, heated, but focused. Africa's future success will depend on stability, sound policies, and solid institutions. Don't miss this. Looking for a venue for your wedding reception, conferences and retreats, outside catering, recreation? Look no further than Coconut Grove Beach Resort Hotel, located in Elmina. Coconut Grove Hotels, memories worth repeating.
down. TV you can afford, always there is a channel for every member of the family. So everybody keep watching Fast Digital TV. And always have some fun. Local and international news, Parliament, Cinemax African movies, Sports 24, Emmanuel TV, GTV, CNN, Al Jazeera, Planet Kids for Kids, and many other channels. Using traditional cases might be pedagogically helpful, but they are often easily forgotten. Business class is to enrich case-based learning for business ethics instruction, discuss sample cases that feature popular work environment, and allow students to learn how to use sample case studies. The business class aim is to engage and motivate students in the classroom. The business class is a unique TV show that presents a more corporate experience within the show and illustrate the violations of norms commonly taken for granted in a work setting and taught in typical business classes. The business class serves as a valuable tool to teach management topics that are often difficult for students to grasp. Watch the business class live show with an audience to help create bond between student lecturers and corporate Ghana. The business class makes every situation real for students. On the mountain itself, uh, you will see the vegetation is very good, uh, and on top of the... The African Business Talk analyzes Africa's business development and how policies and initiatives affect the lives of the African. The talk aims at opening opportunities for industry as well as sound trade culture practices between business owners and entrepreneurs in continental Africa and in the diaspora. Don't miss it as we engage think tanks, businessmen and women entrepreneurs, chief executives, innovators, and people who have worked 
to transform countries like Ghana, Nigeria, Liberia, Benin, Togo, South Africa, Botswana, Egypt, and many other African economies. The African Business Talk, live on Business Television Africa. The tourism industry in Ghana is reported to be the fourth highest foreign exchange earner on our GDP list. We will find out what the impact, the identification, development and promotion of tourist sites in the local vicinities where they are located. We also want to talk to the various chiefs and opinion leaders in these communities to assess whether tourism is making a positive or negative impact on the lives of the local people. This is Tourism TV fact-finding program that seeks to investigate the existing and potential Join me, Ralph Aike, this and every Friday on this wonderful expedition to find out what tourism is all about in Ghana. talking to Yaudu Kranting on the Ghana stock market or the Ghana stock exchange and the activities are happening there uh, with some price changes last week Friday we just wanna, we're looking at you know what to expect especially for today and this week and then also we touched a bit on the currencies with a reversal in some of the policy uh, policy measures that the Bank of Ghana had introduced earlier in the year we're looking at the impact of, of, of the reversals on uh, the stability or otherwise of the currency against the trading, uh, the, the major trading currencies, especially the dollar. We are going to go a bit more into uh, the, the city situation uh, to look at Bank of Ghana's reaction to the report by Fitch that it was printing money to finance government activities. We'll take a look at uh, you know that a bit, and then also uh, we'll go a bit more into detail into the review of the, of the recent um, uh, exchange measures by the BOG. To do the discussion with me this morning is Mr. Fred Avonio, a financial analyst, and uh, you know, a regular guest uh, on, our, on, our, on our set. It's been a while, so it's good to have him back. <laughs> good morning, Fred. Good morning. And welcome back. Thanks. You've been hiding from us, uh, yeah, it, but it's good to have you back. Thanks. <laughs> to see you too. Yes, 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 yes. Um, before we do that, so what's your prediction for our match this evening? Well, I, I don't want to predict, but I'm just praying and hoping that we oh, win our score. match. Yes. <laughs> now, I'm very worried about this particular game. I'm not too happy that we are meeting the U.S. for the third time. Because <laughs> I see. if you've been meeting twice, you would <laughs> like to make sure you do a correction the third time. <laughs> Before you, know? you get so there, yeah. I, I anticipate a very tough game, but mm. I'm just praying mm. and hoping that we can, can, yeah, we should score can do that again. game. People are, people are saying that because you need three cities to <laughs> one <laughs> Yes, I saw that. I laughed. Yeah. Yeah, you exactly. should be done by three goals. He <laughs> said when it was... It was well, we by 2-1. Uh, yes, it was... The exchange uh, rate was 2 CD to uh, a dollar. To a dollar. Now that it's going to trade to, to a dollar, dollar, we should be better. Better by 3 <laughs> Well, we'll see. <laughs> We're hoping that we can make a good impression out there. Yeah, so the Bank of Ghana met... Um, with the press on Friday to talk about the report by Fitch. And um, one of the main issues was that the government was, was printing, Bank of Ghana was printing money to finance government uh, budget deficit. You know, what, what really is your understanding of this and then Bank of Ghana's reaction to that report? Well, uh, from what Fitch was saying, um, it, it, it means then that we are printing money um, to, to support um, um, government yeah. uh, uh, expenditure, essentially. Okay. And that, if it were true, was not a good sign because then it means it's just going to further weaken mm. the CD to mm. worsen the case for inflation, inflation. Uh, and all of that. I mean, so printing money, we all know it's, it's, not, it's not a good thing. So as in printing to finance deficit, 
Mm. It's not a good thing. So when I heard that, I was, I was a bit worried. Um, but again, looking at what is happening and complaints that um, government is broke and all of that, again, you, you were not too surprised to hear that either. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Then, so then we had a, a reaction from the central bank trying to... To me, it's more of an explanation than really denying what Fitch... Fitch uh, what, what Bank of Ghana actually say is, is that uh, it's more like technically... They were printing money. I don't yes. know what to do. Well, to, to, to finance activity activities during the, the last quarter of the year. What, mm. the, the bit of it that, so it means at least they're not printing in this, this first quarter. In the first quarter. In reaction to what is happening currently. Mm. I mean, mm. that is the explanation I'm getting from what uh, back of the said. Saying. So it's not in, in, in reaction to what is happening currently, but something that was done in, in, in towards the end of the last quarter. Mm, if mm, you to take mm, their word mm, and, mm. and so yes some printing has happened uh, it's, it's a thin line really uh, between what Fitch is saying and what Bank of Ghana is saying that's why I want to see it more of an explanation of what Fitch is saying because I think the, 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 the impact of what came out from Fitch on, on when you listen to discussion was the the feeling that okay, Bank of Ghana was printing money and, mm, and mm, you know to mm, finance mm, government mm, and mm. all of that, and people were worried about the risk implications. And uh -huh, yeah, I mean, yeah. sadly, there were even pictures of the Ghana CD <laughs> notes on Facebook, uh, <laughs> and people were saying that oh, it is true they are printing it because it bears the signature of Dr. Wampa. And so it means <laughs> okay, we, we just, uh, you know, <laughs> I mean, so it was good. The Bank of Ghana came to explain that. I mean, mm, we didn't just mm. look at the signature of <laughs> of, of a new. <laughs> A good way of um, I see. assessing I see. So it's good that they came to explain what is going on. Um, and it, no, really, it's not a deny. I think usually, you know, the, the, the way they make I think something the story that probably, yes. Was, yes, and that's how what they do. It's, yeah. it's, it's so, ticking. Okay. So we just hope again. And in, in the release from the Bank of Ghana, they, you could see that they, uh, they still feel strongly that there's the need to make sure that the economy is stabilized mm. Um, mm. And, and, and so that we. We see things get better. Well, in, from the last inflation figure that was re released, realize that well, it's still gone up, but at a slower pace. A slower pace. I'm, I'm hoping that getting into July, when I guess when the harvesting season comes, typically for the, co for the cocoa. Yes, especially. even ahead of the cocoa, I'm talking about food crops. The, okay, the food yes, crops. So typically in the lean season from January to to March. March. Um, that's that's the lean season. So mm. we tend to see mm. food inflation going, mm, going up. up. So, uh, and then when we get to July, I guess, yes, then we'll they start dropping because we are doing a lot of harvesting. We'll so harvesting. I'm hoping that um, with the, the, the BOG policies and then the seasonal change in terms of the harvest, when the two coincide, mm. we'll, have, mm. we'll see inf so inflation mm. dropping, not, not, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> not just reducing in the rate of increase, but then actually mm -hmm. going, down. going down. Yes, and I then, see. of course... When the cuckoo money and other things, and hopefully the euro bond. Do you, do you honestly, if you look at the current rate of inflation of 14.8 um, thereabout, mm -hmm. and the government's target of 9.5, we've already done half a year. Mm -hmm. Do you mm -hmm. sincerely think that we can get up to the 9.5? No, 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 I don't think so. I, I'm, I'm anticipating that when the uh, media review or mm. the complementary mm. budget is presented to parliament they will revise, revise those figures yes, those figures i think even somewhere along the line there's been a mention of it that they will revise some of those um, targets that were set so okay. i'm, I'm okay. expecting that well because it's i don't see that possible because again if you follow what usually happens the trend is that the last quarter typically inflation goes up typically that's what happened so mm. if now we are 14 point we are close close to 15 Maybe it might drop from end of June towards, I guess, September. And but from October, usually. Because of the yield tide yes. and all that. So, so yeah, achieving that target of 9% I, I be difficult. Yeah, I didn't see that happen. Then, if you look at um, Member of Ghana, say, uh, again, saying that there are seasonalities in government's revenue flows, mm -hmm. and that the first quarter, for example, experiences a shortfall. And, and so there's a need for them to finance, you know, because it, then by second, third quarter, it picks up, picks up again. Yeah. Is, it, is, is it a very tenable excuse to give? 
Yeah, I think that's a seasonal trend that typically uh, the economy follows. I mean, over the years, there have been a few years that has been defied. I mean, it happens to inflation, it happens to mm. rev revenue mm. inflows and all of that. And I think we all experience it. In fact, we've come to accept it, particularly if you're in the private sector, that the first quarter, it's a slow period. So what, but so but why, why is, is it because we are just coming out now, of... Yeah, business are not planned. How, how, again, I'm surprised this is still happening because previously mm -hmm. we blamed it on our budget cycle because mm -hmm. the budget was typically announced in the first in quarter. The first quarter. So, so we were waiting, everything, yes. waiting to see government's yeah, policy or direction. direction, and direction and yeah. what so typical people delayed. But now that we have that happening in, in, in November, I would expect that... By December... Companies would have actually most of the time by October, November, companies would have set their budget. Yes, yes. they only adjusted if there are government, you know, mm -hmm. brings up some new policies or some some yeah. new things. Yeah. Then they may adjust it. Yeah. But otherwise, latest December, almost every company. But, but in reality, in reality, it does happen. In the first quarter has been slow. I mean, mm. when I look at what I do, <laughs> the first quarter is it's very slow. dry period. <laughs> and then you see, you see activity picking so up. So you think that after. that also impacts on it does production impact on, and eventually yes, on revenue, and revenue that government can get from but taxes? We, we, we must address that, I think so. I mean, particularly if you're having a budget out in November. Yeah, then why should should we, we, because one of the reasons why they shifted it to, to November was so activity to start from the very beginning, beginning. you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. need to do that. But mm -hmm. that particular statement was, was in relation to the, the dollar thing, I, I guess, the, when the Bank of Ghana said that. The, no, I think it was, was part of the, um, the argument they put up or the, the explanation fish. they gave up to the, the fish, the fish, fish yeah, report okay, that, okay. you know, normally with the, for the first quarter, you have that happening mm. where the inflows are low yeah. and then it picks up from the second third quarter onwards you know so that even if normally if there are any interventions mm. they mm. will print money out if they're going to what, print money what would have loved, i didn't have quarter. that information but we'd be very interested to see mm. the performance or the, the the revenue for the first quarter of this year mm. compared, mm. compared to, to the previous quarter. yes then yeah, that would see. tell whether there was really a shortfall there's a perception that there's been a shortfall particularly in revenue that will come through imports because if you speak to the guys at the yeah, ports at, at SEPs, they give you the impression that that well import up. is dropped it so it will impact on looks. revenue i would have to see the figures to see mm. whether that mm. is that is so no, if you look so, at generally if you even if you consider the fact that you have such a high depreciation of the city yes you have and i think government also introduced some new uh, additional tax yes for imports imports you know so mm. Mm. eventually it, it reduces if, if for example if you are importing anything and you're expecting to have paid maybe one city now you may have to pay one city 50 pesos yeah. and all that mm, right. so eventually it might also lead to mm, mm, a bit mm. of a slowdown in imports yeah. you yeah. know because and then you have this depreciation as well impacting seriously on that yeah, yeah. but it would be good to look at the, yeah, figures. the figures that would tell the story it would be yeah, good yeah. to look at the sometimes figures. It's, it's a perception that does that's not true it might not be so yes it yeah, might not be a so true reason but mm, it's good to know what the figures, figures are, are the imports we'll this year against the previous yes, year yes. to see whether and i would like know. to know I, I don't know i've always had a feeling that it appears it's a deliberate i don't know whether there's a difficulty in coming out to see it appears there's a deliberate attempt to discourage a huge appetite for imports. That's the feeling I, I get. That it's a but, but for uh, what? You know, to make it unattractive, so we begin to produce locally. You know, I, 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 I always go back to my one event story of, of a, a, a shop owner who said, now nah, I'm stopping a Dubai business. I'm doing a, a CD business. You know, that was, that was how mm. she's reacting mm. to the depreciation of the CD. I if see. that happened to all of us, would have seen the positive I, side of it. <coughs> so I don't know whether it's... I, 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 would, I would love to find out, maybe from, from the government, whether there's a deliberate... Oh, because, because we've also had a trade minister at a point mention that they would like to discourage the import of some items. But, but you see, the question So is, I don't know whether if, all of these... There's is, a deliberate effort. The question I ask is, in what or which of the imports... If it is to do with rice, if it's to do with poultry, if it's to do with maize and those things, fair deal. But the things we don't produce in this country, we don't produce cars here, we don't produce car ties mm. here. Even shoes, we don't produce them here. 
the shirts we wear, virtually everything. We don't produce <laughs> nothing, really. Mm. So, in as much as I agree with you, and I think there should be a deliberate policy to discourage the imports of certain things, I don't think we can apply it to everything. T televisions, the phones, we don't produce anything. Yeah, that is true. You understand? So, so if anything, my... That's I'm, I'm, I, I'm, not, I'm not too sure. I don't know. No, it, it, it me, appears... It will be positive. You know, it appears... Then we should look at where yeah. our strength lies. If rice, poultry, uh, those things yes. are where our strength lies, then we should do that. But in doing it, then we, we should also make sure that we, we build the capacity of our people to be able to take advantage of the gap. Because hmm. if you're not careful, then you see the price of goods also rising because of shortages. Yes. Yeah. You are discouraging, but you are not producing, producing to meet the gap. So we need to look at... It'd be interesting uh, to engage uh, government well. extensively and know whether... It's an intent. One of these days, we'll, we'll bring the yes, yeah, people bro. from trade to give us the statistics yeah, yeah, and yeah, also, finance, especially yes. what they are doing specifically when it comes to, you mm. know, the import side of things mm. and mm. even for export. What mm. are we exporting? Alternatively, there, there's also the argument that if if that the true price of of the dollar to the cities about four to five cities. Oh, actually, I hear okay. from five, about five to six. Yes. So six then there's the argument that. No, if we continue to use our reserves to support it, uh, hold on, you're subsidizing imports. <laughs> so okay. again, okay. Uh, maybe, well. so uh, it'd be useful to find out what is it? Is it uh, deliberate uh, to allow things to flow the way they are? No, um, you uh, know, uh, it is true that there is that argument. <laughs> but then you can also, uh, if, if you look at it that way, then for somebody who is paying mortgage, for example, yes. you are killing the person. Yes. Because... The price range of, if you take a 50, let's say a $50,000 house in, in the U.S. or any of those countries, and compared to a $50,000 house here, the qualities are not the same. same. They are not at all. Ours looks a bit more on the lower, much more on the lower side mm -hmm. than what you have there. Yeah. So if such a person is paying a dollar compared to somebody out there, then you are actually killing the person here. So I agree that we have to find its own level. Hmm. But what is <laughs> its own Listen, level? Yeah. That's why I want to be interested to find out people. whether, and if it is, then it should be done and done properly. So that we all see our way our forward. Way, our way forward. Yeah. Then we know that if it is one, two, hmm. six, then maybe it stays around that hmm. for as long as possible, <laughs> <and> not <laughs> the fluctuations we see. Yeah. Um, well, back to what we were discussing earlier, um, I think Bank of Ghana has, had also said that in reaction to the potential of inflation yeah. coming, uh, arising because of the technical printing of money, um, they had increased the policy rate by 200 basis points. Mm. They had increased the cash reserve requirements of banks from 11% to, from 9 to 11%. 11%. Yeah. They also, also reduced the single currency net position of banks from 10% to 5%. And they had net open position from 20% to 10%. If you look at these things, would you think, would you say that indeed Ghana of Ghana, Bank of Ghana has been right in doing, in taking these measures because it's stemmed the rate of inflation in any way? No, that, that's an old argument, which I think still persists. Right? Um, opposing argument from, from the side of Bank of Ghana and the mm -hmm. side of industry, mm -hmm. largely represented by the AGI. Mm -hmm. Now, the AGI thinks that because we don't have too many people within the banking sector, mm -hmm. When we apply the monetary policy the, the way they do it, the impact is not that significant. Mm. That the typical businessman is not even so much fine. The cost of borrowing is high, yep. but even access is a the, the 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 policy rate and and, and the cost goes up. They still go and borrow because they need the money. That's true. They don't have the option of saying that well the price has gone up, so let me stay mm. Mm. and borrow later. And borrow later. They need the money. They can't even get it. So they've argued that, look, mm. trying to control inflation from that side, trying to weaken demand using policy rates and all of that will not help. Rather, we should look at addressing the production side and let's produce to stabilize prices rather than trying to, to increase... What is... Uh, yes, to, to, yes, yeah, huh, mm. to... to mm. Because to in, that, in the some countries, side. they deliberately encourage people to spend. Yes. You know, so that it, it would increase activity, activity in the market. But yes. in our situation, actually, it, I was just talking to somebody and I said that, look, spending has actually gone down. Because 
if you would uh, you normally maybe you buy um, five gallons of fuel, you come to town, go back home, come to town, go back home the same day. Now you probably buy five, but you plan all the things you need to do today. Yeah. And then you go back, back home. home. You don't come back. So the things that you could potentially have spent on, you cut back. If you're buying a box of tomato, for example, now you may probably may have to buy a quarter. Okay? Because it, things are like that price have gone Goldman, significantly yeah, high. Yeah. And so, and it has impacted on how much really you have left to spend. So you don't have a lot of luxury spending as people would have done. And I'm saying that unfortunately for us, even though this is my experience and your experience and somebody else's experience, we don't have real data. Yes, and I think that is that. that is that is what we need. There's not enough information, information. to tell us. Because again, I, I have difficulty in determining or just saying that spending is gone down or otherwise. Mm. Because again, you look around, uh, there are things that suggest that it looks like spending is gone down and, and other things that suggest that it's gone up. There are a lot of new eating joints, new casinos, mm. malls coming up. Now, if people are investing in those areas, it probably is an anticipation that people will spend, or people are spending, and so they are going. And so you, and I, I think we need to come up with very good information to tell us what is happening. And now, we should be able to do that. We can even use some of the um, key supermarkets, mm. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. get an yeah. index yeah. around their, their, their volumes, hopefully, uh, or hoping that they'll give us accurate, accurate information. information. Because again, <coughs> we don't have the issue of people trying to evade tax and all of that, and so not they willing to, to hold back <laughs> information. So that also not give us accurate <laughs> information. <laughs> but we need, we need information that we can rely on. That will mm. tell us. Because sometimes you have a perception and you, you go out and realize that, okay, the reality is, is completely it's different. different. Other, other times too. So we need that information so we can tell whether things are uh, going up, moving down, or what is that it's, it's going on. You also see this, a uh, lot of these floods coming up, and, and we are told whether it's true or not that most of them are sold out if before it's completed. But, but most of and, them are and not. And then whether uh, they are Ghanaians or foreigners coming markets. in. Well, yes, up markets. Up yes. Well. So, so it's, 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 it's Maybe that's the explanation that there's an in, a, a growing middle income uh, class. class. Really? Yeah, possibly. Not, I, I, I've heard that argument as well, but if you look at it, you realize that most of these areas are not really affordable. Maybe we have to categorize <laughs> even the middle class into lower middle class. <laughs> not middle middle class. class. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, because so most of them are not affordable. Yeah. Easily to... Yeah. I mean, I may ask people. myself, what, I mean, when the citizens are sold out, who are those buying? Because, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I think over the weekend, I was talking to a friend of mine, and somebody has works in the financial system and has a, a mortgage he qualifies for a mortgage of I think fifty or sixty thousand. He okay. can't find a place to buy. Yeah. He can't find any yeah. place yeah. to buy. Yeah. And he go to real estate, they are much higher than yeah, than that. You know, sixty thousand. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes yeah. you look at it, you think that it's and sixty thousand dollars is when you convert it, it's now one hundred eighty thousand Ghana cities. Yes. So you can imagine that if you can't get a place to buy, even a two bedroom, you can't get to buy at one hundred eighty thousand, and that is very serious. Yeah. It is. Because if you look at the apartments or the housing here, the quality is not as high as yeah, you find well. outside yep. this yep. country. It's not yeah, as high, but... Well, anyway, we will take a short break. Um, when we come back, we'll go a bit more detail into Bank of Ghana's review of the recent uh, Forex measures. We'll, we'll take one of, you know, some uh, go to detail one by one on some of them to see what the understanding is and then what the implications of that will be on the Ghana city. I'm especially looking at this week, today and this week, and going forward to see whether it would have any serious impact on the stability or otherwise against, uh, of the city against the trading um, currencies. So we'll be right back. Uh, stay tuned in.
Do you know that there are more successful people in Ghana today than before? Well, that is the truth. And the secret is in prudent financial planning with the right financial manager. You need to know the right fund manager who spends your money 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 4 weeks in a month, and 12 months in a year. That manager is at Gold Coast Fund Management. At Gold Coast, your money never sleeps. It revolves every second to give you more money for use when you really need it. For the past 21 years, Gold Coast Fund Management has held a strong reputation of spinning people's money to beat inflation, depreciation, and treasure bill rates. Put your money to work. Move from savings to investment. Pay your investment tight into the gold fund and gold money market fund and be assured that when you are in need, you can turn to them to resolve your... Further than Coconut Grove Beach Resort Hotel, locators in Elmina, Coconut Grove Hotels, memories worth repeating. come back from the break earlier on we've been talking to Fred on Bank of Ghana's reaction to a report by Fitch on the technical printing of money to finance government budget deficits uh, now we'll take a look at the Bank of Ghana's review of the recent uh, exchange measures that they put in place remember somewhere around February or so they introduced some changes uh, in terms of how to operate your foreign exchange accounts and foreign currency accounts, and and created huge, you know, public discussion on the implications of these things. Some school of thought will tell you that look, we haven't seen any change in the depreciation of the city since the introduction of the policies, and I think that the pressure uh, had been on Bank of Ghana to reverse some of them, especially where, you know, in some instances there had been some slowdown. In, 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 in the dollar that we get, even from individuals. People would rather keep the dollar in their homes than uh, bring it to the bank. And that's also causing some serious challenges in the banking system, where you have huge you know, backlogs of people looking for the hard currency to finance uh, certain things. So they have reversed some of those measures, not all of them entirely, but they've reversed majority of them. And we want to take a look at some of them and what the implications uh, will be. 
before we were, we, we no, uh, during the break, we're looking at some of them, for example. And if you look at, in general, the fact that BOG's uh, policy measures earlier in the year hasn't truly, hasn't yielded the kind of response or result they were looking for. One well, would say that this review was in the right direction. With the pressure from, you know, various bodies, one would, one would possibly agree that, well, this was in the right uh, measure to have reviews of the, the, po the policies. I think BOG, from what I've heard and read, uh, I don't think BOG agrees with your position that, <laughs> that it's not had an impact. <laughs> because in the release, they did mention that, that the depreciation, the rate of depreciation has and reduced. And that they were doing 7% in, in February, and now they are doing two, about 2% two plus month. monthly. So to them. But again, in that same release, you see some level of uh, admission that <laughs> it hasn't worked. <laughs> yeah, it's not all well. Oh, well. And again, I think it's how people react to policy decisions. Mm. And that is very important. You can, you can have a good policy, but if people think it's wrong, they will react negatively. Mm, mm, and, mm, and mm. you know, when this announcement was made, that was, that was a very strong feeling that no, you know, this is not right. You are taking us back to the era of control. The regime. regime. And, 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 and I was worried because in, in its own statement, the Bank of Ghana did admit that people that there was a wrong, wrong impression that we were going back to the control regime. And even investors also had, and that was significant, because yes. if, if an outsider yes. had that impression, they would quickly react. That's true. And now, uh, so, so again, within the Bank of Ghana's own statement, you see that uh, uh, there's an admission mm. that mm. Uh, things, things didn't go well. well. Yeah. What, what if nicely... Um, called the unintended <laughs> <laughs> consequences <laughs> of what came out from Senti. Yes, yes, so yes. That, that is that. <coughs> so it's, again, and the general question uh, was that we're going to review it mm. Um, mm. from Senti and all the discourse we've had, and even Bank of Ghana's own statements earlier on did say that after three months, they have to make some changes and all of that. So it's come. Um, we, are, we are happy that it's come. But again, you know, I always look at the soft side of things. Okay. How do you get the people involved so that when you take a decision, there'll be a very good buy-in? You don't have a majority opposing... Uh, you know, you know. Uh, so you do, it's not just enough to take a decision and then put it out there. There should be a lot of engagement out the behind the scenes, mm. extensive mm. En en mm. engagement with the right, mm. people. right people. And it should be an engagement of a, a, a kind of partnership relationship, not that... Mm. Hey, I am the uh, boss. And I'm imposing this. I'm telling you this one I'm going to do, do now, it. So no, it is going to happen. Mm. But there should be that buy-in so that when, when you come out, people want to move. Because I was not too excited. The, the first reaction I heard from the exporters and importers um, association, it might not be representative. But, but we see them as the voice. That's true. And they have come to say that it won't work. Or that even the review is not going to meet the, or is, has not met the expectations. And that is not positive. It, it, so it, it does tell you of probably that we have a serious problem with engagement because when you are introducing such, in quotes, drastic measures, when you are used to, you know, driving at 50 miles per hour or kilometers per hour and you jump all the way to 100 within that time, y you know, it's, you have serious implications on yeah. yourself. Mm -hmm. So my thinking would have been that we could and we should have engaged, especially some key bodies, much more than we yeah, did. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. if you remember, when it came up, virtually everybody condemned yeah, it. Yeah. Virtually everybody, except for Bank of Ghana and maybe one or two people who thought that it was in the right direction. Virtually everybody you know, condemned it. Now that they reviewed it, and you are even hearing people saying it might not work and all yeah, that. Yeah, no, no, no. It, it still doesn't give you the impression know, yes, that we've learned much. The issue of engagement in, in Bank of Ghana's statement, they did say that they met with certain groups of people. I wish they had mentioned it. The names of or the kind of people they met because with. then we they know yes they mentioned that they the right people to so be they had they did with. some some amount of engagement mm. in the course of reviewing before they came out with um, this final decision. But if you're getting exporters coming to say that it won't work, 
Um, is it that the person who spoke is speaking in his own capacity? Mm. Or mm. Again, mm. it would be useful to know some of these things. But if you have an effective engagement, including coming out publicly, being in the media, talking, mm. 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 you know, not just explaining policy, by engaging, getting the people's People side, it, as putting well. their, their, their input into whatever you're going to do, then it, it helps. So mm. it's, not, it's not too late. They should go ahead. They should engage the various groups that are directly impacted, uh, both local and international, so that we will see a positive reaction. reaction. I would love to see if by midweek you see the CD reacting positively, positively to this to news. This. But, but it brings me back to, for example, the introduction of the new VAT taxes mm. or the VAT on financial services. A bill is passed December. That's supposed to come in effect by January. And virtually nobody even knew what was happening. Yeah. And it's, again, it's the issue of the engagement and how it is done. It, it's because it's, it's just, I mean, I was okay, because of my interest. Yeah, so you probably I'll, will, Yeah, I knew this way happening. Out. I knew, even from the very beginning, yes. The, yes. the issue of trying to know which items were affected. That problem existed. Mm. And so exactly. The, exactly. the GRA said well, they were going to meet with the banks. That was even around January, February. You mm. know? Mm. Huh. But it was, again, I'm sure something probably was done, not well done. You, some of those things you need professionals to help you, you know, in terms of the and, communication, and how you want to communicate, and all who that. should be engaging, how, you know, because when you speak to business, uh, again, and I'm not restricting this to what is happening currently, over the years, it's happened when it's happened. you see that a lot of business people have the <coughs> issue that when you are speaking to authority, official DOM, it's an issue of we are asking you to do this and not <laughs> that we are listening to what you are, you are saying. saying, that kind of engagement. <coughs> Sometimes they think they are on the ground, so you should come and listen to us. And then input that into your system. Into your system. Yes. So I, I would wish that they would do a lot because of Because if you look at even this new VAT, VAT, the adverts started coming out after people's yeah, the reactions. Yes. New tax you are introducing now affect virtually everybody. So why don't I would have thought that the engagement or the public education started the last year, even before the president finally appended the signature. So after the last year, so people are already aware that look, this is what is happening. The questions will be asked, the clarifications will be will be brought forward, and all that. But to wait till you introduce them, we are, we are because we are doing it in first July, and it was just about last week, for example, that we had somebody talk to on, us on, 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 on this, and, and I even, monitored it, a few it, radio yes. stations also last week. You know, it doesn't help. And even till date, that's that's no full clarity on some of the. I mean, that's for instance, true. the issue about the the the, the cards, the, the ATM what, cards. Is, um, is, is that is the charge on at the time of securing the card or when you? The, the explanation the is that it is yeah. if you, um, you know, they, they they charge you to replace a card a for card. you. So at the time of securing so they would, the card, they would, the, the charge. charge is on the charge. You understand? Of securing the of card. Securing the card. That means if you are charging you one city now, they may have to charge you one city seventeen yeah, pesos. Yeah. To get a yes. card. That is what it means. So at the time of so securing the money that card. you pay, okay, but that, you know, but we are not charged for for the transaction. Not the transaction, yeah. but, but we are charging you for that a perception is still in the system. I mean, people it have been arguing true. that we want to encourage the use of ATM cards, cards and, and now you are imposing the yes. ATM cards. They will still, you know, when you no, do a transaction, yes, a one off, they charge you. Yes, uh, that's the bank a one charges off. you. Yeah, but that's a one off. One off. Ah. But the bank, the charge on that. The VAT is to apply yes, on that as well. Yes. You know, so you have. So but I agree yeah, with you. Yeah, so that case should be very ex important. Uh, well, well, well explained because that's a one of thing which shouldn't necessarily have any impact on the no, use the, of cards. You know, some of the banks charge the monthly fee for the usage of the cards. Yes. Uh -huh. So and if so it's going to impact on that, charge on that as well. Then that's where that's the problem. Will so the clarification so is important, so and I, I'm hoping that even as we discuss these things, our people yeah. will learn that it's yeah. important and that. To bring clarity to some of these things. And, and long beyond, public education yes, is and important. And beyond that, I think that's also the need for, for us to be told that, look, our, our current situation, our status as a, middle, a lower middle income country uh, demands that we probably have to start paying a lot more for things because we are not getting the concessionary facilities mm, mm, as mm, we used to. As and all used of that. To. So that, again, that mindset 
um, gets in. But that also must be matched by what it's we important. see government doing. It's important. Yeah, from, from well, government. let's let's go back to our discussion. Uh, we're sorry that we strayed off a bit, but <laughs> some of these things have implications on uh, some of our discussions as well. Now, if you look at the measures that have been introduced, when they introduced the measure, they said that 60, I think there was a 60-day mandatory repatriation of yeah. all export proceeds. Yeah. That has been reversed. Yeah. Now, what they've done is they are aligning, you know, that to the agreement or contract you have. So if it's a 120-day contract you have, they've aligned it to that. If it's a 90 days, the same thing. This should be positive for uh, exporters. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's better compared to... So they have that uh, flexibility, flexibility. To, yeah, to, to, to bring in the money. And then, of course, they, and when you follow that, they are allowed to retain yes. uh, up, up to 60%. Uh, so up to 60% in their yes. export receipts, mm -hmm. in, their, in the foreign exchange accounts. And then the remaining 40 is what they should convert, convert within 15 days yes. uh, to that. So it, it should help um, as well. Then you have a 60-day... Well, you know, they also ask them to operate a, 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 a margin account. Accounts, yes. That has also has been, been changed yeah, now. Changed, yes. But they can build, use a margin account to build a foreign uh, exchange for their exclusive use. Uh, you have exporters of goods and services may receive payment in foreign currency from non-residents. And this is, you know, something that yeah. there were yeah. a lot of arguments <laughs> yes. about. Um, that's going to be an, uh, an, an, an issue. I think it, it, it makes business sense somehow that you allow someone who is bringing in the dollar mm -hmm. to pay because that brings that brings in additional dollars mm. Um, mm. and somehow addresses the challenge that we have but then people could raise the issue of it's discriminatory why do you accept somebody to bring in dollars make mm -hmm. payments mm -hmm. in ghana in dollars okay and yet you say people shouldn't price in dollars mm. Mm, mm, you know, mm. uh, there should be that level playing field. If you say don't price in dollars, don't get paid in dollars. <laughs> because, I mean, elsewhere, you have to go and change. You to probably, come, when you get in, yes, you would have to go to the, to, to a bureau, an exchange, mm, mm. you know, with your passport and all of that, go through a whole process That's to true. get the local get currency. Local but you would do it because you don't have the option of, of paying in in. in in dollars, mm, or, you, mm. know, you know. That is true. So that is true. I'm sure people raise issue with that. Although, I mean, when you can, we, we need the dollars. So if people are bringing in the dollars, we should accept it. Yes, I shouldn't price. But the issue of pricing, um, in a very nice way, people are not complying. People are not. In a very I mean, nice way. People I, are not. They will, they will give you, yes, they'll give you the, the CD, CD, equivalent. CD equivalent. But they know of <laughs> the current day price of, yes, of, of, of the, the dollar. CD to dollar. Yes. Yeah. But, and I think yeah. we need to work at that. It, to me, it's very, very important, and it should be done thoroughly. We should have a case where, because to some extent, it's laziness. Again, when, if I can just use a dollar to, 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 to price, mm. at the beginning of the year, you should do your analysis very well, do all your projections. It's going to be difficult. But then, so that when you price, mm -hmm. you have a price in CD staying through to whatever time. Okay, okay. So okay. if, for example, it's a... Uh, a house you are yes, selling. Yes, it's a house you are selling. You price it at say hundred thousand Ghana cedis in January. You should hundred thousand Ghana cedis. So Even whatever time now. you have to change, you don't change it because maybe hundred thousand cedis and tomorrow is hundred thousand and one cedis because the dollar has changed. Has changed. But that is what is happening because people are not quoting in they truth are, in cedis. They are quoting in dollar. They are quoting. They are <laughs> giving you. You ask to pay. So if you don't pay today, you go tomorrow. It will an change increase because. The price for the of the dollar CD for the day has, has changed. changed, and so that defeats the purpose. So we'd have to really get that done so that people mm. are allowed. Mm. So you do your projections. So you price, you look at okay, the likely uh, changes that might happen months or a quarter, then you price. Mm. Mm. So that, that price stays for two months for a quarter. But not a case where the price changes every day. I mean, I mean, they are not pricing in dollars, but the price changes every day. That is happening. So currently. what we are getting is not the mm -hmm. true, true yes. price, but yes. a dollar denominator. So no matter what you tell people, they will, yes, they will comply, <laughs> but they are, but not. They are not complying. Yeah, the, the reason why we are asking them to comply, we are not achieving that. What can we do practically in that situation? 
you know, again, that's why we all say that all of these measures are fine, but the fundamental issue is to have a stable currency. If you have a stable currency, mm -hmm. it will be okay to price in CD. In CD. Because I know that when I price at the end of, at the beginning of the year at uh, maybe 1,000 CDs, the, even by June, if I don't change the price, probably that's I might lose right. only five CDs mm, mm, or ten, mm, CDs. ten CDs. And that's okay. So I'll still maintain that price up to the middle of the year, mm, mm, without, mm, regardless mm. of what is happening. happening anywhere else. I see. So, and that I goes see. See. basically to the stability of, of, of the currency. I see. But if you don't do that, then that problem exists. But if we want to address it superficially, then we probably have to tell maybe the financial experts will have to come in and help people to project okay. and then okay. price in CDs such like that it's not vary. But when you do that, what will happen is that because if I'm beginning of the year and I have to quote a price that I can maintain for three months and, I'm, and the CDs keeps depreciating or we still have the same problem, then I'll price high. At the beginning of the at year. At the beginning of the year. To take advantage to take of whatever the position. But, but that would, that would, that would also be, be impacting be negatively on, on, on us and, and, and economy. So I, I don't know. I think the basic thing is the stability of the CD, and that goes to the issue of production. Production. Because you have more. everybody importing for, um, tiles yeah, from. Yeah, yeah. And, and I was telling been. somebody, when you go, to, uh, the, there's a place on the road to Sol Pond. A few uh, minutes, dry, you yeah, know, yeah. there's the tiles, the ceramic yes, tiles. Yes, there. yes, yes, there. These are things that I show. We, we have the clay, we have everything here. We should be citing industries here that can produce these of the highest quality. Because otherwise, every, when you, you talk to a real estate people, they'll tell you we are importing this, we are importing that, yeah. some from China, but they won't tell you the truth, they are saying from yeah, Europe and all that. China. But the point is, we are importing too many things. Yeah. That we can easily produce here. The sad thing is we have importing doors and wardrobes. Everything. You know, I mean, everything. everything. I'll, I'll tell you for us that experience. We went for a program and one of our, our colleagues was in this room. Yeah, um, decided to come out and then he couldn't open the door. Oh. In the hotel room. <laughs> he got locked up. I mean, it was crazy. We had to go and get some tools. And the door is such that you can you can break it down. <laughs> and then when the, the lock is possible, so we had to go and get some tools for him. Pass through some netting somewhere. Oh, it, it, it delayed <laughs> our appointment for about almost an hour before oh. we were able to get him out of <laughs> the place. And the guys, they were telling me, oh, it's a Chinese door. You know, yeah, <laughs> but we keep bringing them in. It's interesting. So. And, and meanwhile, there, there, there are places here and there are companies here that, given the push and given the necessary help, can do excellently yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. I've been to a place uh, where... I, I told a friend I went with that if you look at the quality of what they are producing, it will match any in the world. Mm. And yet, that business is almost like dying because mm. people are importing from China. It's you know, it's, yeah, it's, so it's, it's, I think it's not that's helpful. the fundamental thing is look, getting back to the issue of production. The production. Let's produce. Let's fully implement our policy of import substitution and effectively with timelines and targets and monitoring and everything else. I mean, by this time, the Export Promotion Council should be everywhere driving the export agenda. Free Zones That's Board true. should be everywhere driving the export agenda. That's what we need. Otherwise, really. Hmm. Well, there's a lot that we need to do in this country. Now, looking at the, the fifth measure um, that was introduced, that you know, the limit of $10,000 would drop per travel. And the 10000 annual transfer of that documentation with the counter has also been reversed. Yeah, without documentation. Uh, yeah. So I presume that the, the traveling document and the tickets... I don't think you need it anymore. Need I don't think you need it anymore. It was interesting. When you, anytime, you know, when the measure was introduced, you, you go to, to the banking hall, yeah, you see people, you know, oh, holding their passports. And and that. and it's, what, it's, it's interesting. I don't know. I don't know. But that has been reversed as well. And also, you can withdraw uh, from your foreign currency account and foreign exchange accounts up to a limit of 1,000 or it's a column per transaction in foreign currency. So even if you put your dollar in the bank, you can get your dollar back, or you will get your do dollar back if you need it. But for per, for, uh, per transaction, the limit is uh, $1,000. Uh, and that, that should also at least give some people uh, people confidence that yeah. they can put their money, money get it. in, in yeah. the dollar and they'll get it out. Yes.
I, I was just joking with uh, Yao that wouldn't people look at this as a ploy, for example, uh, to get them to bring in their dollar, dollar and say, you know, we are reversing <laughs> the <laughs> 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 I mean, I mean, Policy yeah. consistency is important. It's important. Yeah, and then you also have the tre threshold for transfers abroad without an initially submitted documentation has been increased from $25,000 to $50,000. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so th these are measures that mm -hmm. they are putting in to get people's confidence up again. Up again, yeah. You know, in, in, and I think that they are positive. Yeah. yeah At least yeah, okay. uh, they, they've listened. Mm. They will listen. Mm -hmm. One of the things, and I, I think it's something that we should be working more on, and I had a problem with that was, we're introducing the, the cards, the various mm. cards, yes. but we hadn't, we're not providing enough point of sale terminals for people to be able to use it. Yeah, okay. that, that, that is an issue. I mean, fortunately, I'm, in, I'm involved in a, a, a work that, that relates to that. Okay. Uh, it's not a program we're going to roll out as many pauses as possible. Okay. The, I think, I know the Ghana Interbank Payment and Settlement System keeps, they've procured in excess of 2,500 pauses. Pauses, yeah. And yeah. they've started rolling out. I think the deployment is slow for a number of reasons. The merchants themselves are not too, too keen. interested. The banks mm. too are also, the issue of profitability. So, mm. again, so mm. it's, it's mm. a bit slow. But I think... I think it's, it's a policy that the, the government must own and drive at that level mm. and drive it. You know, we, we, hear, we hear the story of Impesa and all of that. that. That's something that the government and drive so that we, 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 we come to accept that, look, the card is the way to go. Mm. Mm. Because, mm. I mean, it, it's very helpful. You must buy something and you don't have the money on you. It's not that you don't have money at the bank. You have, but you, you, you know, it is if you're not working. Yes. <coughs> so if, if you could just use your card to make payment, it makes life easy. And in fact, if you get a lot of money, if you get a lot of us using their cards, there will be more money within the banking system, then monetary policy could be a lot more effective than so it is now. you actually don't even need physical money anyway. Yeah. yeah. You only need your card on your you. Card. You should be able to... Now, look, I go to a, a fuel station... And sometimes if you don't have money, you can't buy fuel. Yeah. Meanwhile, you have money in your bank. In your bank. You so don't use your card to pay and then just <laughs> and move on. So again, I, I would, I would, the government should really get involved in this um, uh, deployment of post issues. I've seen some of the banks also also doing it. Yes. Some of the banks yes. are announcing yes. that yeah, That's true. they're getting That's true. Let's Let's flat the system with the posts. There should be that ownership from government side. I mean, IT is, I mean, electronic is, is the way the everybody's way go. going. So... You come uh, back out. Let's, let's, we need a lot of government ownership in this. Mm. Drive it. Let's have effective marketing. Let people buy into it. And then and let's get on. That's and what I, is happening everywhere I, else. And right. I think that is, that is one thing we need to do more. The education yes. and, the, and the information flow. You know, I think be much more. a lot of people don't see the value of communication. And that's why typically when there are difficulties, that's the first part of the body that is cut away completely. I agree. And I mean, I, I'm into communication, so I see that happening to me a lot of the time. But we need to put in a lot of investment in communication, get mm. people educated, mm. to buy into mm. it, mm. And, and you have success. You know, when we're growing up, the, the, the information system people, that is the, the yes, they're almost everywhere. 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 But now you don't see them. Yes, of course. And again, now this, things have changed. Now we are on on WhatsApp, on but internet, if, if, on if that is the case, that, shouldn't we radio, on television, so it's just, yes, as just well. a matter of so using the channels that people, yeah, the channels that you can use to get the people. And because now if you want to, for example, if government wants to disseminate information, it's just a matter of talking to the telcos. Yes. You have everybody's number. Mm -hmm. Virtually, mm -hmm. you have as, as many yes. as people as possible yes. on, on phones. Mm -hmm. You can easily send them information mm -hmm. through Let that. me see how so quickly quickly things are sent around on Facebook and yeah, and WhatsApp. WhatsApp. You get you something know, Twitter, and friend, your friend also has it. Well, I mean, so, so, I mean, so, but I think we need to put a lot of money into that uh, education aspect. Mm, mm, we need to mm. get the, it should be that ownership by government, by the banks, banks. everybody. So we deplore the process. Sometimes I, I think the banks themselves are not too keen, but unfortunately... Yeah, looking at the profit side. So I agree, but this wouldn't take your money yeah, away like yeah, you rather yeah. you, what i see is rather you can get a lot more people coming on board you understand? Fact, it's, is, it's a matter of readjusting because this can really take away some costs 
when people are not coming to your banking halls as mm. regular mm. as they, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. yes. So get That's the people true. to, instead of coming to the banking hall, let them go and use their card and shop. Actually, I've seen a, a few banks, one of uh, the, the banks also within, uh, you know, that are even deploying POSs yes. for yeah, yes, withdrawals, yes. withdrawals and deposits. And deposits and all that. So and it makes it, it, it should easier happen. To and it can't like India, <laughs> Brazil, where you can even go and apply for a loan from the area shop, you know? That's true. The, 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 the small shop in your area, yeah. let's go and submit yeah. your loan application form, and when it's approved and it's best, you go take your money from that place. You have no business going to a bank. And I think we need, we need to get there. I'm hoping this and creative um, it's important uh, let's look at this last measure before we take a break and, and look at the final measure that they, they introduce the encouragement of the use of other currencies yeah. the Chinese yuan yeah. for example uh, you know and in, in and making it more readily available to people because we have a lot of people going to China now yeah, yeah my lots I mean, and yet we're not actively trading in the Chinese yuan mm -hmm. You know, so that's one thing that they are introducing. Uh, if you look at that, do you see, for example, that particular, you know, um, uh, policy having a direct positive impact on the city, for the encour encouraging the use of the yuan? If you get people to use it, if you get people to start going for the yuan, mm. and if it's readily available with mm, as equal stress as, as it will be getting the dollar, then we'll begin to see the, um, um, the impact. Some impact and on that's that. why I keep saying that should, it's a need for effective engagement. Educate. Because it will exist, and people will still be going for the dollar if they think <laughs> it's more convenient to, to go. Because particularly when it's become something that you've done all for all these years. So we need to drive that. And again, the fact that they encourage them to also use the cards when you go the outside. Cards. So you don't have to carry cash on you. Um, and then you can you can shop around. But I think a few cool. banks have introduced quite yes, some yes, innovative yes, yes, uh, yes. plastic cards there. in the market. There. So interesting to find out the impact, uh, the, yeah, the patronage, the patronage. Yeah, yeah, so that's true. Uh, that's true. Mm -hmm. I think so a few banks have done that. So because we, we need to. Well, we we'll take our final break uh, for this morning's program. Then when we we'll come back, we will look at a few more of the recommendations that the Bank of Ghana uh, brought up during the the, the review. Um, policy. So stay tuned in, we'll be right back. Do you know that there are more successful people in Ghana today than before? Well, that is the truth. And the secret is in prudent financial planning with the right financial manager. You need to know the right fund manager who spends your money 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 4 weeks in a month, and 12 months in a year. That manager is at Gold Coast Fund Management. At Gold Coast, your money never sleeps. It revolves every second to give you more money for use when you really need it. For the past 21 years, Gold Coast Fund Management has held a strong reputation of spinning people's money to beat inflation, depreciation, and treasure bill rates. Put your money to work. Move from savings to investment. Pay your investment tight into the gold fund and gold money market fund and be assured that when you are in need, you can tend to them to resolve your financial problems. Gold Coast Fund Management. Investment advice worth its weight in gold.
come back from the break. Um, that was our final break for the show. Uh, we'll look at the final recommendations that the Bank of Ghana introduced last Friday uh, during their meeting with the press. Um, so if you look at the final recommendations, one of them was that all, the government should review existing agreements and direct all mining oil and gas companies to open and operate retention accounts with Bank of Ghana or resident banks. What will be the impact of this? That's going to be a very difficult one. Mm. Because a lot of these contracts have the what they call the stabilization clause. Clauses. And which have locked us. I mean, there was an attempt by government to revise some of those um, uh, uh, yeah, contracts with, right. the, <laughs> with the mining companies. Mining companies. It didn't work. Yeah. Because yeah. they brought out the issue. You, you've been locked in. So uh, I don't know what differently can government do. <laughs> I mean, can I government see. persuade. I see. You know, so uh, that one is going, to be, is going to be a big challenge. It can only happen to the new contracts that will be signed. We make sure we don't, we don't you do mean, that. You mean um, we, we can't review the existing agreement so that they set difficult. up got the open accounts with the local banks? You, you can only persuade them. Because if they start to say that, look, the agreement that I have with you, because the issue is to... Revise the retention. Uh, mm -hmm. How much money they can yeah, yeah. Uh, they can send out. They can send out. Yes. Or how much they can retain there. Yes. And how much they yes. can bring there. Uh -huh. And if we've already signed an agreement with them that allows them, in some cases, up to ninety percent or hundred percent to be sent out, and want to revise it, mm -hmm. uh, we have a problem there. So that's going to be difficult to uh, to, to pursue. But what, what the approach <coughs> the approach that we could be using is to we can have very innovative ways of getting these companies to spend the money. I mean, yeah. some, yes, because when you speak to some mining companies, they'll tell you that this retention thing doesn't even make sense because sometimes per their business, they are, they are forced to spend X amount. So they are not even able to send that much of money, money outside, outside because they, if maybe if, if you are procuring boots locally, uh, if you are buying uniforms locally, if you are even procuring some of the equipment locally. Mm, mm, mm. Then it takes no away. Yeah. So the money that you, you have left to take outside is reduced. So that's how, that's, when it comes to the issue of local participation and, and, and yeah, local, local content, content. Uh, let's see how, how mm, not mm, necessarily mm. as the entrepreneurs, but they're providing services such that mm. at the end of the day, if the revenue that is made is about 90 and you are getting 50 or 60% of that Stay in, mm -hmm. not because of a law, but because they have to spend on services provided by Ghanaians. They will be addressing that issue even in a more effective way. And I think that's the way we should we should. So instead, of, instead of forcing them to open retention accounts here or, you know, co coercing them to do it. Yes, rather, what services that, the what services. Are services that they need? How can we get Ghanaians to provide those services? So that, they, that are, they, they are forced by their own operations to, to keep spend money and spend here. Yes. I think so. I I, as for, for those that have stability with us, um, crosses with us, it's, been, it's going to be difficult. very difficult. It's been difficult trying to get it anyway. And it's, I don't know how it's going to work. But if we get them to spend here because we are ready to provide those services, I think that will be a lot better way to, to, to get this result I than the, the issue of retention. The, now, they're also talking about uh, the recommending the lodgement of foreign exchange process of government agencies such as the GMP simple funds from donors with the Bank of Ghana, Ghana instead of keeping yeah. them with offshore yeah. banks. Yeah. Why, why yeah. do they keep them with the offshore banks, for example? It's interesting. I, I would like to... I, I, Company I like GMPC? Yes. Yeah, they procure something outside. Sometimes the, exp the explanation is that what they're going to buy, it's outside. So then you want to, do, you want to keep that money outside so you can do the business again. And, and, and the other argument is that the process in getting the money back, and I noticed that because of that, the central bank itself mentioned that, that 24 hours, 24 hours you get to be able to get your money, money, money back. Your money so to, yeah. Again, with with GMPs is our own, so, so we should be able we can, to do we that. can, yeah, we can, we can do that, mm. and, 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 mm. and, and 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 see how how it works out. I but see. Yes, but and I, I keep saying that let's let's look out for the very innovative, very nice ways of getting people to spend within within the. Mm. Mm, I see. And then they're also recommending the streamline of management and technical service fees under LI 1547-1992 paid to multinationals. That the Bank of Ghana will engage the GIPC, Ghana Free Zones Board, mm. Minerals Commission, Ministry of Energy and Mines and other stakeholders in this regard. Um, 
what what is it seeking to do? Yeah, um, so I think the idea is to show that they are, they are I, I think what I'm getting is so that they are paid either in, in a local Co currency. currency for those services because if you are paying them in dollars, that's yeah, additional the pressure thing. trying to find them money yeah, uh, to, mm, to pay mm, uh, mm. again. Yeah, but if, if 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 the person is paid in mm. in, in, in in dollars and he's eating in, in <laughs> restaurant owned by Canadian, he's Sleeping in hotels owned hotel by, by Ghanaian. He, he drives a car service by Ghanaian. At the end of the day, spend the money. Yes, because look, frankly speaking, I had, I, it was a time that I, I was working with about 14 guys who had come from Spain because mm. I, I, I speak Spanish and I took them around when working. Wherever we went, we created a lot of bars. This were 14 people. Mm. Anytime mm. they decided to mm. spend and, and they brought um, um, euros. There was a lot of money and foreign that spent. Spent. That was Yes, that was spent within that. That local okay. economy, mm. you know. Mm. So mm. let's gather people. Let's create the situation, the avenue for them to spend locally, locally. And, and those avenues should be owned by, 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 by us and not foreigners as well. well. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and then finally, uh, they're also seeking to engage the chamber of mind, uh, chamber of commerce, to use a certificate of origin issued by the chamber to monitor repatriation of export proceeds. Mm. Um, if you look at all these moves. But particularly with the repatriation, monitoring the repatriation yeah. of the exports uh, proceeds, do you think that there is much that we can do there? Yeah, as much as we're working hard to monitor, the, those who want to attweet the system are also working hard to attweet the, the, the system. <laughs> so, and, 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 and I mean, typically our system monitoring is difficult because of yeah, all, yeah, the, all yeah. the basic problems we have with the system. So, I don't know. As for this bit, I don't know how effective it's going to be. But again, all of these measures will not address the fundamental issue of production. Production. Uh, and, our, and we know them. Our import substitution policy. Let's implement them. Let's produce a lot more so that we can reduce our imports. Mm. There will be less. There will be less pressure on the uh, on, on the, the city. Yeah, and, and then. Then we'll, we'll do one. So I will hope that they will not stop here. And then the, bank, the, the very first time when they introduced the measures, the, the Bank of Ghana did mention that look, government itself needs to address the, those, the, the, yes, fiscal the, the fiscal discipline and, 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 and all the other issues. And I think that's where we need to concentrate our efforts and then export more, get the, mm. the, the, mm. the inflows, and mm. we'll do a lot better. I, that's, that's just one quick one. It's in relation to the Fitch issue about the yeah, uh, yeah. Bank of Ghana spending, uh, um, uh, uh, printing, uh, uh, printing. Not so much the printing as in financing. The government, the government deficit. Yes, yeah. government deficit. The law, fortunately for us, the meeting at Senchi has called for, called for that to be reviewed because the law that exists in that act says that they are they are allowed to uh, finance up to ten percent of the revenue for that year. For that year. Now, typically, we will to determine the revenue of that year at the end of the year. So you are saying that yes, yes. So you are saying that Bank of Ghana shouldn't finance more than ten percent of the revenue that will be Produced. generated this year. Let's say twenty fourteen. Mm -hmm. It's difficult to monitor that because you get to know the revenue generated in twenty fourteen, probably in twenty fifteen, January mm. February, mm. by which time you've done the financing, the financing. And, and so typically they will come and they've exceeded that percentage. But now the essential people are recommending that it should be ten percent of the previous year. Because, because that we know. have we have the, yes. the figures that you know so because at least then you can stay within yes um, because that, okay. you know okay. you know exactly what you're working with and I not see. the projection that and then because they admitted that they've actually spent even beyond yes what uh, the, yes. the yes. law recommended, we'll recommend it, yes. why 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 are they sanctioned when they go beyond the law is it because they're a government agency they are. I mean, can somebody tell them? Bank Ghana has some amount of autonomy, but look, I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's government. It's, it's, government. <laughs> it's, government. it's, it's happened. I mean, it's not the first time. I know. I I, I know. remember. In, I think it was the time of um, Dr. Paul Akwa. He had strong reservations. It's a look. We're going beyond a little bit. I mean, hey, we need money. We to this, must, this must get done. <laughs> so so we started. So I'm I happy see. that Sanchez made a recommendation, and I hope I it to be. 
to be implemented. So we are hoping that actually the Senchi report be made public as soon as possible because mm, the mm, time mm. that was set. At least we've seen the first thing there, the, the review of the. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> that will we'll address the unintended actions. <laughs> <laughs> actually, if you, if you look at that, the Bank of Ghana itself. Yes, yes, said yes, before yes, Senchi yeah, that yeah, they would, yeah, they they would, would do, do that. I was actually yeah. hoping because initially I said somewhere in April or ending of in April or May, hmm. you know, but for us, it's so good that at least they've made good their promise mm -hmm. of reviewing uh, that policy and all the policies. We'll see whether we'll uh, see any reaction in the course of So the your final comment, are we to see some stability maybe this week as a reaction to these uh, numerous policies? The, yeah, the, our, the history, revised our history doesn't support that so well. I mean, we are, we are slow in, in reacting. reacting. And sometimes we don't even react. And for sometimes we, we, we react adversely. <laughs> so it's difficult to tell. And that's why I think that they need to engage the people that, that matter. They should continue with the engagement. Look, talk to the people behind the scenes, wherever on the radio. Engage them totally so that you get that buy-in. Once they buy into it, they will react positively. But if they don't, so let's see what happens this week. It's, I hope and pray there. Thank you, Fred. <laughs> Most welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, that is Fred Avonio, uh, financial analyst. Uh, we're looking at, you know, the, the Bank of Ghana uh, policies, uh, especially the, rev the revisions that they've made to some of the policies that they, they introduced earlier in the year as a way of stemming the slide in the city. We say that we haven't seen much change, but they say, well, there's been some changes. But the key thing is that they've revised those policies. We are hoping that it will bring some stability in the Ghana city, because for all of us, it's important. <laughs> Before this economy <laughs> collapses entirely on our heads, as long as we stay here, it's important also that we help and support some of these policies to make it work, because eventually it will be to our own benefit. Yeah. You may not agree, but if you don't, what you can do is to send in your comments or you know, make your views known. And if it is positive enough, I'm sure Bank of Ghana will listen because I'm, I know they have listened. And that is why <laughs> we've seen these uh, changes coming, uh, you know. Remember, soccer money comes up, uh, you know, this afternoon at 5.30 or this afternoon at 5.30 p.m. with Niyama Olenu uh, as it brings you the financial side of the 2014 World Cup. I know it's going to be exciting, mm -hmm. so make sure you, you, you stay tuned in and watch. 5.30 p.m., Soccer Money with Ni Ama Olenu. Um, so that has been our program for today. Unfortunately, I, wa I wanted to talk about Black Stars, but this is business, so we can't talk about too much football. But I'm sure that we can all support the Black Stars, or we should all support them to do well. If, if they do, it goes a long way also to support the local economy somehow. Those who are selling the replica jerseys, those who are selling the souvenirs and all that, it gives them some money. Mm. So let us pray that the Black Stars do well, and especially tonight as they open the account at the 2014 World Cup, that they can overcome the USA once again. Mm. Third time lucky, hopefully. <laughs> and then we can progress out of our group. So all the way uh, in Brazil, we wish the Black Stars all the best. And they, they should know that we are solidly behind them to succeed. This has been Business Africa Live on BTA, and I'm Benjamin Afre, your host. We'll see you same time tomorrow morning with another exciting edition. Hopefully, we'll be bringing you positive news from the Black Stars camp uh, tomorrow morning. Enjoy the rest of the day. Enjoy the rest of our, of our programs. And see you. Have a good day and a great week. Bye-bye for now. Business Talk analyzes Africa's business development and how policies and initiatives affect the lives of the African. The talk aims at opening opportunities for industry as well as sound trade culture practices between business owners and entrepreneurs in continental Africa and in the diaspora. Don't miss it.
as we engage think tanks, businessmen and women, entrepreneurs, chief executives, innovators and people who have worked to transform countries like Ghana, Nigeria, Liberia, Benin, Togo, South Africa, Botswana, Egypt and many other African economies. The African Business Talk, live on Business Television Africa. Africa is becoming more populous and richer. It has experienced unprecedented and uninterrupted economic growth for the past three decades. But if African countries are to become economically successful, their governments will have to implement adequate policies which contribute to the expansion of the private sector, job creation, and an increase in the productivity levels. Corruption must be dealt with in Africa. Unemployment, mainly among the youth, is another challenge facing African leaders. These and many more issues that hinders our growth will be discussed on the banner and provide the why, how, and what to accelerate the continent's dream of economic freedom. What on the banner every Saturday is going to be hot, heated, but focused. Africa's future success will depend on stability, sound policies, and solid institutions. Don't miss this. Looking for a venue for your wedding reception, conferences and retreats, outside catering,